Indiana University says it's reorganizing its sustainability offices to better implement the university's climate action plan. But some students and faculty at IU Bloomington say they've been cut out of the process to make the university a cleaner, greener place. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Rebecca Thiel reports how IU chooses to move forward could determine whether students, faculty and staff have a role in helping the university reach its climate goals. Sophomore Will Gardner grew up playing in a nearby creek in Fort Wayne. Now he's studying environmental science at IU Bloomington. He points out a sinking stream in Dunn Meadow on campus. It's almost as if all the water goes right underneath and then right where that bridge is is where the other side of the stream is. But a little bit further up, it just shows right back up. It comes right out. Gardner says getting more hands-on experience would help him find a job and narrow down what he wants to do. But there aren't enough good internships to go around. Since he's spending at least two summers working or taking classes, the pressure is on for the summer before his senior year. I pretty much have one real opportunity to get a good solid internship in before I'm out of school. So you, you want to make it count. Students used to get more of that hands-on experience right on campus. Professor Kelly Eskew was president of a now defunct advisory board, which used to tackle sustainability projects on campus. Eskew chaired a working group where a company trained students to do waste audits. The goal was that we would repeat that work year over year using students to take a look at what our trash looks like here at Indiana University. And that has completely fallen away. It's really a terrible waste of a wonderful, not <laughs> no pun intended, but it, it, it's a missed opportunity. Losing the board means faculty also lost a way to share their expertise as IU tackles possibly the most ambitious sustainability project ever, its climate action plan. Though the university held at least one public forum at each campus, the planning committee meetings weren't open to the public. And at least for now, implementation meetings aren't either. I think it's kind of a tragic loss. There is so much expertise and so much uh, uh, energy and enthusiasm about engaging with these issues. And more and more, uh, fa many faculty and students feel walled off from this process, with many of the operations being uh, handled in, in secrecy and kind of behind closed doors. That includes the new chief sustainability officer position, which oversees the climate plan for all of IU's campuses. Hamburger says faculty wanted an independent role hired through a national search, able to hold the campus accountable to its climate commitments and maybe more ambitious ones. Instead, it reports to capital planning and facilities and was posted internally. IU refused to explain why. While some faculty worry about all of these changes, Jessica Davis, the new chief sustainability officer, says she's excited to get to work. She admits her team has been more insular lately. That's because the university was busy reorganizing all of its sustainability offices under the climate plan. And ultimately, it's our job to implement and manage the climate action plan, as well as try to standardize the sustainability experience across IU to the best of our ability. So because that triggered a significant reorganization for us, uh, now the provost's office is working uh, on what a new model might look like. While things may be in flux right now, Davis says the implementation committee is working on a list of projects that students and faculty can get involved with. And she says anyone on campus can always talk to their representative on the committee or request an audience with the committee. Like it or not, the way IU has organized its sustainability initiatives is not unusual, says Bridget Flynn. She works for Second Nature, a company that helps universities track their greenhouse gas emissions and find climate solutions. They say having the chief sustainability officer tied to facilities is very common, though today more of those roles are getting pushed up the hierarchy. More of those positions are reporting directly to the president or to a VP or like a CFO or a creation of a cabinet level position. Flynn says no matter how they choose to reach their climate goals, universities should try to involve students as much as possible. Even if IU decides to, say, hire a contractor to make their buildings more energy efficient, students could write requests for proposals or evaluate bids. Flynn says change will take time. There are a lot of stakeholders involved, and that involvement is important. You know, in order to have, have people feel like they were really part of the process and um, see themselves in the plan and in the implementation and that it really represents the desires of the campus. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Rebecca Thiel.